In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the PaperMind Blocker Paper Hardcover Notebook. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a paper test, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this notebook coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. I'm back reviewing another one of my own notebooks. This is the second notebook that my company, The Paper Mind, has launched. Now, I didn't mean to put them so close together. You know, the first one that I did was this Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebook. I'll put a review to that up in the corner. The Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebooks were over two months late because I used Ocean Freight to get them here from Japan. Now, these are made in Portugal and I learned my lesson and airshipped them so they came in three days after they were finished being produced. So normally I'm not going to be bombarding you with the paper mine products, but the way that timing worked out, this just came in, so I really want to talk about this. And again, for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, I'm giving 10% off with code BB10 at thepapermind.com. Okay, so again, this is my product. I'm going to Try to be as objective as possible, but obviously I like it. Uh, all right, let's get into that review. So here we have the Paper Mind Blocker Paper Notebook. This is a hardcover notebook, and it comes in two colors, black and gray. And we've matched the linen strip on the inside and the bookmark to the cover. So if you get the black one, you'll have a black bookmark. Everything will match. They come in blank and a dot grid version, and this is sort of what the packaging looks like. It's pretty nice. I'm really excited about this notebook. Now, let's go through the, the specs. So, let's first talk about the, the size. This is a roughly a B5 size notebook. It's just a touch smaller than that, and I'll talk a little bit about why we made it that way. But... As a comparison, this is a Paper Mind Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebook, which is an A5 size. Just so you can see the difference there. And then, again, with a few more comparisons, here's a Fields, Field Notes and a Smithson Panama Notebook. So I think this size is very portable, but it's not so small that you can't use it for, you know, real journaling. I've been using this as my main journal for quite a while now and I'm actually really loving the size. One thing I'll also point out is compared to the Mitsubishi Bank Paper, Mitsubishi Bank Paper is 88 GSM. The paper in this notebook, the blocker paper, is 80 GSM and in terms of thickness they're basically the same thickness. So you get a hardcover that's really the same size as that standard paper soft cover notebook in terms of thickness, which is great. And because this is blocker paper, it's actually more opaque paper than that Mitsubishi bank paper. Okay, so talking about the cover, this is a paper cover with a buckram pattern embossed into it. The paper is made by G.F. Smith in the Lake District in England, and this is their, their color plan paper. It's an uncoated paper, so as you use this, going to kind of age and patina, I've used this one quite a bit, so you can see you know, a little bit along the edge here, and there might be a few spots on the back here. It's going to age as you use it. It's going to have that kind of wavy, sobby sort of um, look to it the more that you use it. So that's the cover. It has a Swiss binding, which means it's the book block is only attached on the back part of the cover, not the top part of the cover, and that just allows you to, you know, have a very flexible. It allows you to have a very flexible notebook. What I like here is, if you're out and about with your notebook, you can write without. You don't need a a desk. You have very flexible binding with a hard cover, so you have a really good surface to write on, you know, really anywhere in the book. Um, that is really nice, and of course it does lay flat as you would expect a Swiss binding to do, so that is 
really nice. Going in here to the top here, we have 192 pages of Gamund the Locker paper, and there's 12 signatures. It's a stitch binding. It's very flexible. So that part is really, really excellent. We have a five millimeter dot grid here in a light gray, which I really like. Now let's talk about Gamund blocker paper. For those of you that don't know, Gamund is a paper mill in Bavaria, Germany. They make a lot of very high-end papers. Some of my personal stationery is, is on Gamund paper. Now this Blocker paper is a newly patented paper. I think it's been around since 2019. A wood pulp paper that they put these, they call them blocker particles in there to make the paper very opaque. And the moon claims that at the 100 GSM weight, it is completely opaque and it is the equivalent of a 170 GSM paper in terms of opacity, a typical 170 GSM paper. So the result is that you don't have a lot of show through, and I've been writing with a, a very fat nib here. You know, you can see through it. So just as a, a comparison here, looking at, at these two, this is a Leuchtstrom 1917 120 GSM notebook, and really, in terms of show through, these are pretty close, and this is only 80 GSM. Now, as a comparison, Here's a standard Leuchtturm. You can just see a pretty huge difference here going on to my Mitsubishi bank paper notebooks. Um, pretty big difference. Now, I don't consider the Mitsubishi bank paper to be particularly see-through. It's a dense paper, but compared to this blocker paper, th there is absolutely a noticeable difference. I did a lot of testing with this paper and a lot of other Gamund papers, and this is really one of the best that they produce for use with fountain pens. Let's go to that paper test that I did here in the back. Now, I did a lot more fountain pens than I, I normally do, so we have some spillover here onto the other side, but looking at the, the face of this, really there's nothing here that I, I think looks bad. Everything looks quite good and clean. The Oto Fude ball this, I think, is actually, it's just, the pen is, for whatever reason, kind of messy. That isn't actually feathering. Now, looking at the back here, we really have no bleeding at all. I would say this Pentel Energel 1 millimeter, it's not coming all the way through, but it's coming through maybe a little bit. And that's quite a, a fat, wet gel pen, but none of the... Fountain pens were a problem. The six millimeter pilot, you know, my Hakase with the double broad curse of italic, King of Pen Broad, Opus 88 with a 1.5 millimeter stub, no issue. Now, when we go to the sort of the more troublemaker pens, we do get some bleed through for sure from the Stetler permanent marker, the Sharpie, the pilot oil drawing pen a little bit, the Copic sketch a bit also even made it onto the other page there. So I think the, the performance of this is really really excellent especially for how thin this paper is it's really quite good now in terms of writing on this paper comparing it to other papers well first of all compared to the mitsubishi bank paper you can just see right away that this is significantly wider than the bank paper which is sort of it's not quite a cream paper but this is an off-white paper for sure compared to the mitsubishi bank paper this is a bit smoother. It's definitely a smooth paper. It's not like Rodeo where it's super slick, but there's a little bit of feedback there, not a lot, and it's it's really nice to write on. With fountain pens, this paper works really nicely. Even with, you know, very sharp pens like this Aurora here, with a, that's a, a very sharp italic here. Not really going to be, not really an issue. Do a, a pilot parallel here. And then here I have a very wet vintage Omas Ojiva Extra. Notice how scratchy that is. 
but it can put down some very wide and very thin lines. And <laughs> because that omas is so wet, uh, <laughs> how do I make it dry faster? Go. Let's give that a minute. At any rate, it's not bleeding. So this can handle fountain penning very, very nicely. Uh, I'm really impressed with the paper overall. The only normal pen that I would say was problematic was that Pentel Energel, which is a, a very wet gel pen. Okay, is that dry? I think that's dry. It looks dry. No bleed, so great. Okay, now one other thing I do want to point out is up front here, and this was a, a call that I, I had to make. So I have this linen strip here which just kind of protects the the binding. It's done with a cold glue, which makes it pliable and strong. But, you know, on these first few pages, you might have to push down on it a little bit, whereas later in the book, it's not going to come up. It's a pliable glue there. Now, it is a stitch binding, but the the stripe here or strip here is done with a cold glue and as you use it more as you break it in more it really won't be an issue but in the first few you do get a little bit of resistance just because of that linen strip anyway so just to talk quickly about the size originally i designed this to be an a5 notebook however blocker paper is a short grain paper and it can either be this way or this way. You know, if it's portrait, the grain goes this way. This is a long grain paper. This is the normal uh, paper that you would have in most notebooks. Blocker paper is sized this way, and the grain goes this way. So why does the grain matter? Well, paper is anti-sacropic. Sacropic? If I'm not saying that right, I'll put the right word up on the screen. But anyway, if you think about corrugated metal, right? It's weak in one direction, but in another direction, it's strong. So that's the same with the grain of paper. And basically, when you have a, a signature, sorry, this was a really fast drawing. This is a typical 16-page signature. It would be even, not messy, like the way that I made this. 16-page signature is what you would find in a lot of good quality Japanese notebooks and very good quality European notebooks like this. Whereas, you know, if you have 192 pages and you only have six signatures like this Rossi notebook, you get something that's not super flexible, lay flat. But anyway, basically this is the, the layout of the piece of paper, right? So you have the front and you have the back and they're folded together and then cut basically so that you have a 16 page booklet which would be equate to one signature but because it's a short grain paper the way that you would normally want to fold the paper to maximize the space is the stiff way and that will just make an absolute mess of the spine and the pages you just can't do it so my options were to make a very large almost a four-sized notebook, which would be very big and very expensive. I could make an A5 size, but I would have to throw out about half of the paper, which one, that would be expensive, but more importantly, that would be just a huge waste of really nice paper. So I wanted to, as much as I could out of the paper and still have a normal, highly usable size without having waste. And this B5 so just a hair smaller than B5 size is what I came up with. So that's ultimately why we did that. Now, there's only one other notebook on the market right now that has 80 GSM blocker paper. And that's from a company in Switzerland called Hieronymus. And they, it's called the Notebook Soft. And they make an A5 size and an A4 size with this paper. The A5 size is... 210 Swiss francs, which is a bit more than 210 US dollars, and the A41, I don't remember. It's 250, 280 Swiss francs, which is just 
an insane amount. And I don't know what they're doing with that leftover paper. I'm sure they're repurposing it for something good. And I would love to have one of those papers. Hieronymus, send me a notebook. <laughs> but anyway, this is only $27. And I think it's a really good notebook. I'm really happy with the size and the way that it turned out. But anyway, I just wanted to explain a little bit behind the scenes of why we made the notebook this size. So what are my pros and cons for the Paper Mind blocker paper hardcover notebook? The biggest pro is definitely that blocker paper. This is a unique high-end newly patented paper from Gmund in Germany. It is super opaque for being only 80 GSM and it is very fountain pen friendly and it's super nice to write on. I really really enjoy this paper. I also like the paper embossed hardcover. It feels really nice and it's something that's going to patina and age as you use the notebook. I really like that about it. I like of course the Swiss binding. This just allows the, the notebook to lay very flat and to just be really, really flexible. So it's very comfortable to use. You don't necessarily have to use this notebook on a desk. You can be holding it and write on it very comfortably. So I really like those features about it. I also really like the size. This is very close to a, a B5 size. And this size is very portable, but it's not so small that it's useless for, you know, journaling. I've been using this as my main journal for the last week, and I've been super happy with it. A lot of these smaller notebooks are quite a bit more narrow, and that just, for me, just doesn't work. You know, I can't get a full sentence on one line. Not really an issue with this notebook. Of course, it depends on how big your handwriting is, but anyway, for me, this works really nicely for journaling. Now, in terms of cons, right now it's only available in dot grid and blank. I'm hoping to add ruled in the future. Because the paper is pretty opaque, I've tested this with a guide sheet, so you're thinking you can buy the blank version and put a guide sheet under and sort of have the ruled pages I don't think that works very well. It's it's pretty faint. I think you'll have a hard time with that, unfortunately. I think that's pretty much it. Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, again, get 10% off with code BB10. Please check out thepapermind.com. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen, paper, and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.